afternoon, my name is Janice Morin and I work at Bella Houston Academy as an EL teacher. I've been involved in international education for a very long time. I've led projects locally in school and also in other schools and at local authority level. I worked as an international education officer for a while. I was a long-serving e twinning ambassador. I am still a British Council Skills Ambassador and I've recently become a fellow of the Global Skills Network. And when we saw Turing um, funding had been released in the first round, my colleague and I, Murdo, jumped at the chance um, to take some young people away um, and work on a climate change project because at the time Glasgow was co uh, hosting the COP26 conference. Um, I know that Murdo's going to be talking to you about some of the nitty gritty of this and our um, drive to, to help to address some of the effects of poverty. And I'm going to have a look at what we did while we were there, the impact it had on the learners, both here and the ones in Iceland, also the impact it had on staff here and in Iceland. I'm going to take you on our journey. Prior to leaving Glasgow, for the almost a year before we left, academic year, our young people were working on climate change. What did they know about climate change? What did they know about Iceland? We did a baseline assessment using um, Padlet to share information. And the same was done by the class that we were going to be joining in Iceland. Now, for some of our young people, this was their first flight. The staff on the way out from Glasgow were absolutely amazing. And they even did an announcement um, for our students which is very kind of them. It was exciting for us to be able to give this opportunity to some young people who'd never even left a local area. But I'll talk about more about that in a moment. On the first day we were going into the school, we decided to take the phones off um, the children because I wanted them to look out of the window. We were going to be taking the phones off them in school anyway because the school didn't allow mobile phones, which I think is a good thing in class. Um, so, because for some of them, they'd never seen mountains, they'd never seen the sea. And the journey from Reykjavik out to the school was spectacular. Um, we just saw such a range of urban, which was completely different from the urban in Glasgow. Mountains, seaside, snow, all sorts. And I think it worked well. I think they, they, they just couldn't believe their eyes, to be quite honest. Our resident geographer, Murdo, uh, had done all the route planning, which was excellent because uh, I'm used to leading projects. So it was so nice to have someone else uh, leading it for a change. Um, and we chose to get off the bus stop a stop early because this meant we had to do a, a little forest walk to the school. And every pupil without exception, even the ones that didn't want to walk, <laughs> um, they loved the walk. It was magical. It was like for them and for us, with just seeing it through their eyes too. It was like walking through a magical forest. What struck all of us was how quickly um, the children in the schools bonded. By break time on the first day, they'd all made, they'd made friends. They'd, also, they'd already made a Snapchat group. It was incredible. And I think part of that is due to the nature of the school that we were visiting. Something that all of our pupils loved was that they had to take their shoes off and their jackets off. They were in a cloakroom and there was no shoes on in school. They said it made it feel more homely, they felt more comfortable, more relaxed. Um, as you can see from this slide, there are lots of activities in the school for uh, the young people to do at break time. And it was really interesting to see how our group responded to it as well, very positively. For example, we had a school refuser with us, and um, she, her, her, I mean, her attendance was something like 20% before she came. It has improved slightly. It has improved since coming back. And uh, I pointed out to her that she'd had 100% attendance at school that week. Um, it was just such a wonderful experience for everybody from the moment we arrived, to be quite honest. And we were so proud of our young people from the moment we got to the airport. I mean, we were already proud of them. But we didn't know how some of them would respond to travelling. We'd just come out of lockdown. So as well as no international travel, there hadn't really, really been much local travel either. From the first day we were in the school, uh, things just went from better to better. <laughs> um, the pupils were all working on their presentations. They, they had a lovely auditorium where they were able to do the presentations. 
and the staff there told me that they that having having a real context for learning for the Icelandic pupils meant that they'd all um up their game. They wanted to impress the visitors, um, and they were all much more work, working much harder on their presentations. They wanted to improve their English literacy. Because uh, obviously for them, they were doing it in another language. For some of our pupils, it was another language too. Um, it was just such a wonderful experience from the moment we arrived. What is not to like about ending the school with a bounce? The ending the school day with a bounce. And that's exactly what we did. This big bouncy pillow with a little park near the school. And the pupils had the freedom to go and do this. Away from their teachers or with their teachers as we chose to do. And... As you've noticed, probably a lot of my slides, or all of my slides pretty much, are tweets from when we were actually there. Because I think it gives a real flavour of what we were doing and tells you the story itself and the impact it was having. Even like it's mentioned here, you know, one of our um, Arabic speakers who was with us, he was able to go and use his bilingual skills in another country to order food to make sure we got a good deal. <laughs> Our Twitter feed was to share with everybody what we were doing at home as well um, and also with the people who had helped to fund it, the Turing scheme, and to just open it up to the world in general what we were doing and why international education is so important. Not just great to do things online, but it's also wonderful to do things in real life. The impact this had on our young people is going to last them for a lifetime and some of them said that themselves. They'll never forget this and the confidence, you know, that they gain from it, all the soft skills that they build along the way. And we were trying to link in with our own school as well while we were away to keep it engaging for everybody who wasn't there. So while we were, I think it was National Numeracy Day, yeah, it was National Numeracy Day. And uh, so we were trying to tweet, you know, um, in context to that too, as well as keep our pupils in contact with school. In addition to taking part in different classes, experiencing new curricular subjects such as chess, which a lot of our pupils loved and totally embraced and continued to do when they got back home, uh, they were also working on, a climate, on the climate change project and they were developing a website looking at the impact of climate change. And in Iceland, you know, they, they could actually see the physical impact of that, maybe more so than they realise in their own country. Um, in Scotland, like seeing the the the, the melting, etc. And it was really interesting for the young people to collaborate over that. Also staff, um, having a look at how well they all work together, etc. One of my favourite moments was in the first day and we took our um, students for a walk through Reykjavik, uh, the city, and took them down to the seafront. And for some of them, it was the first time they'd ever seen the sea. And the excitement was just palpable. I don't actually have that photograph on the slides today. However, you can probably check it out on our on our um, Twitter feed. So we did the Golden Circle tour with the students from the school. And as you can see, we got to see the geysers. Uh, we also went to the waterfall. We visited the point where the tetutonic plates meet, Eurasia and um, North America. And it was just such a wonderful experience. All these different things our young people had never done. We also had an excellent guide who was telling us lots of stories. We visited um, this geothermal tomato plant and the young, all our young people learned about that, as we did we. Uh, as you can see, I tasted something. Uh, it was actually quite interesting. It was a bit of a mix of a taste. But all these are experiences that you don't get unless you get involved with international education. And I can't recommend it enough. Turing, we found the funding to be pretty flexible to allow us to do what we wanted to do, which was to ensure that everybody could take part regardless of their financial circumstances. In fact, we targeted um, specifically young people who we thought would just look at a poster of a, a project advertised or a trip somewhere advertised and just think, well, it's not for me. My family can't afford it. I'm not even going to ask. We wanted those pupils to come with us. And I would say we're all very proud that we did achieve that. 
This is one of the many photographs that sums up the joy we had on our first day and for the duration of our visit to Iceland. Without exception, we all came back having had a most marvellous time. And for you to get involved, I would say it, take, it, take, it takes time and a lot of planning. Now, there's not a lot of time before this next deadline. However, you do, there is enough time. It will take work. I would suggest if you want to find partners, you do that quickly. You may already have some partners. Um, so you can, you can get help from the British Council, schools online. You can, find, um, you can find partner finding opportunities there. Also from the Global Schools Network, you can find partner finding opportunities there too. Um, if anybody would like to contact me, Rich has my details. Um, so I'm happy for him to uh, give you my, my work email address. If you would like to chat about anything, I'm happy to do that. Um, plan it. Don't forget to do a baseline assessment if you get the funding. But then I'm sure we can talk about all these types of things later. Just uh, use your imagination. Think of something that maybe you're already doing in your school. Something that you would like to enhance. Something that you think looking outward would help. And, you know, there might be like, for example, I worked with a school who were doing an art project. Uh, they were, so they compared local artists. The Glasgow school looked at Charles Rennie Mackintosh and the Spanish school looked at Gaudi and that worked so well. It was a simple thing that they actually did in both schools every year, looking at their own local artist. And then they brought that to life more and were able to compare and contrast and collaborate together. So I just want to wish everybody well who's thinking about applying for Turing funding. And I would say just go for it. You've got nothing to lose. My final slide is or a tweet from one of our colleagues in the Icelandic school. And I think it sums up how we all felt, to be quite honest. And it was really interesting because a lot of the, the teachers in the school there had never been involved with international projects before. And I think for them, it's given them a flavour of what to do next, what they would like to do next. They'd like to do some more of this. And as we mentioned before, um, there's lots of people available to provide help if you're going to apply this time round, just do it, just do it. And uh, the Global Schools Alliance that I mentioned earlier that I'm a, a fellow of, they are able to offer you help too with your application process. So just make contact with them. Thank you.